Hey everyone, Ebert here with Hurricane X. Hope you guys are staying safe and sound. But over the weekend, I actually came across an interesting tweet from Mike. It really got my head scratching. I mean, what is this guy doing over the weekend? So I'm here at his place to just find out what exactly went wrong. What did you do? Well, I, I think I need to hand in my PC Master Race card. Anyways, over the course of the weekend, I was I was switching out a bunch of TRX40 motherboards because I've been doing some additional testing for the uh, USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2 You know, going from one motherboard to another, I had this uh, new Zenith 2 Alpha motherboard, and uh, I took the CPU out, and I dropped it on the socket, and I bent a couple of pins. Did you just pull Linus? Uh, well, it wasn't done live on cam, so I don't think it was oh, on purpose. Okay, so just so, for the camera. All right. <laughs> but anyways, one way or another, this is the motherboard, and the socket is uh, pretty much destroyed. I don't want to put in a CPU. It would be hilarious if Butterfingers might drop this again. This is the damage, my friends. This is what happens mm. when you rush and you what? don't pay attention to what you're doing. Instead of ordering up another motherboard, I wanted to see if I could fix this one. So I've got a couple tools here. Uh, we're going to have this as a fun little piece of content before both Eber and I go our separate ways, uh, going to self-isolation and uh, social distancing. I'm going to miss you, buddy. But uh, past that, I think we're just going to see if I can actually not only fix this, but fix this and not nuke a super expensive CPU. And no, there's no sponsor on this video because no sponsor would want to probably have their ad in something just so ridiculous as me ruining this. Yeah, no one's so. paying for your mistakes. No, 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 not on this one. I'm paying for my own mistakes. So let's hope I don't screw this up even more. Let's do it, guys. Yeah, all right. So let's talk a little bit about some of the tools of the trade here. This is not my first rodeo with this. I actually had to do this. I think it was on an FX 8150 way back in the day when, um, when I screwed that up too. But this is a completely different socket and, and Approaching this from a socket perspective instead of a CPU perspective is, is very very different So let's talk a little bit of the tools of the trade So first of all, this is a magnifying loop that I uh, use back in the day to paint Warhammer miniatures So this is coming into effect right now. We'll leave a link to something like this in the description below. I've also got a pin a long pin which is this and you can actually see it right here. So this long pin will allow me to get in a little bit more finer detail into the pins and try to slowly bend them up. And then there's a little bit thicker pin that will allow me to continue the bend upwards once I have a little bit more space in there. Finally, there's tweezers. Ha ha ha, yes, I know. Hello, Verge. This is probably why they needed it because they probably bent some, some pins when they screwed things up. So I've got some bigger tweezers and I've got some needle nose tweezers, which are super, super important. Do I recommend doing this? Well, that really depends on what you want it to do. If you are able to RMA the motherboard because of your own stupidity, then great. Another issue that you might get into is you might completely destroy your processor if some of these pins are not in the proper locations. So I'm gonna give this a shot. Um, it's probably gonna take a little while. I'm gonna have to move things around. Another thing that you might see here is I kept the motherboard in the box. Luckily, Asus ships these motherboards with an open-ended box so you can start your setup and everything else and this is allowing me to protect the the rest of the board from potential other stupidity that I might do. My hands are sweating like crazy so oh man this is gonna be rough. Alright let's start here and you know what sometimes these pins might actually be broken if that's the case well, guess what? The motherboard is completely borked. And for these motherboards, it's not only a matter of just bending upwards the pins. The pin has to touch the pad at the bottom of the processor in a specific location. And if it doesn't make contact there, the, it's either going to error out, you're going to get a CPU error on the motherboard, or on the flip side of that coin, you're going to you might short out your CPU if it's a power pin. So, we will see how this goes. I don't know if you can see it guys, but on this side, all it took before was a couple of little bends. It looks brand new now. Yeah, that looks good. The other side's still a complete cluster, but this is not a short process. So this is going to take, uh, I'm going to say a couple of hours to properly move everything back into the right direction, make sure everything's at the right angle.
watch me drop my water on it. No. It's so funny, these pliers, they look so small when you hold them in your hand. Not pliers, <laughs> tweezers. All right, so I'm gonna say that we're about, ooh, I don't know, um, three quarters of the way there. There's a couple little darker areas in here where the pins aren't quite aligned. If the pin is bent, one of the main issues that could be is that the continuance of current through that pin might be disrupted. So I'm gonna keep on looking if I can, if I can sort of fix this even more. But right now it looks like pretty much everything is aligned. See that? Yeah, from the top view it looks <clears throat> perfect. Yeah. But like when I come over here from this angle, it looks still looks bent, right? Looks Especially bent. in this area. Yeah, like it, yeah. Look, it still looks bent. So. But it's. The pin itself is bent, but the head aligns right now. So I'm going to try and bend a couple of those pins so they're straight. Right. But if I put a CPU on there right now, I'm pretty sure that everything should align. So the next part of this process is we're going to be very, very careful and we are going to put in one of the processors. All right, so this is the idea now, um, is to apply some pressure with this and see what ends up happening. If it, if it can push some of the pins into place or if some of the pins are so bent that they won't bend back. We're gonna take it off again. And honestly guys, please don't try this at home, even though I'm trying it at home. Ironically, that looks like it moves some of the pins back into perfect positioning. All right, so at this point in time, um, I'm hungry, I'm gonna break for lunch. To you on the other side, guys. All right, so recharged and refueled, and uh, you know, I got a little bit of a uh, hero juice here, Japanese whiskey. Just Bad to... idea. I know, right? Bad but... idea. <laughs> but anyways, we we're we're not sponsoring this video, and we may as well be demonetized too for drinking on camera, right? I need to bend back the pins. So, and he just wants to make sure they don't do anything stupid. Anyways, cheers, guys. I'm gonna continue with this. I actually covered the socket. You might have noticed before that I closed the socket and that's because I needed to access it from both the left and the right. I'm gonna do that again. So anyways, another thing that I want to mention really, really quickly is um, you're gonna see on forums and on a couple of comment threads, and I'm sure in the comments of this video, that you can use a mechanical pencil to sort of help along with the movement of these pins because if there's no lead inside of the mechanical pencil, you have this really, really small opening. And you can use that to guide some of the pins. Unfortunately, with these pins, you can't. All right, guys, so I think that's as good as it's gonna get for now. I'm gonna have uh, Eber set up some B-roll for this and um, sort of hope for the best. I'm gonna install the processor and put this together and uh, let's see how this goes. As long as I don't drop anything again. Okay, so the system is assembled. Moment of truth, the power, there's juice going through it. So uh, the biggest thing is it goes through the CPU checks on the diagnostic LED here on the Zenith. So I'm going to keep my fingers crossed. I'm not sure if I actually put in the right memory kit though. Well, it's uh, trying to establish that. Oh, 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 CPU. Uh, uh. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. All right. We just we just have to wait for. What about the peripherals? The the boot sequence on these boards is super long. Woo! 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 All right, all right, all right. High five. High five. High five. Okay. Maybe I should let you hang, just like you always let me hang. But yeah, but okay. This, this is it, it. It worked, but the next process will be to put this thing under load. Come on, baby, just boot in the windows. Boot in the windows. Uh oh. That's a problem. That's a problem. So what do we do? What do we just do? All right. So I, I realized that the SSD that I was using here is an older legacy SSD. So I needed to enable the CSM compatibility module in the motherboard. So hopefully this will work. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. That looks like it's going to work. Uh, I hope so. It's got. E uh, uh, is it, it's going to go back to the BIOS. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's, it's loading windows. Okay. Three hours of work, man. Three hours of work. That's that's good. Uh, excuse me, three hours of work for what? Yeah, for my your... screw up. Yeah, my screw up. Okay, okay. just to clarify right. that. Just to clarify that. So, anyways, this is gonna chooch for a couple of minutes here. We're gonna bring you back when we're on the desktop and we're ready to load this thing up. So, the 3960X, it's working. All right, so uh, we're in Windows, Cinebench 3960X with the Zenith Alpha, right? It's the Alpha. Yeah. Yep. It's working. It's working, but we gotta look at that score. That's the most important part. You're just gonna be holding it there for a couple seconds. So let's uh, let's see. As long as it 
reaches what I'm expecting it to. Oh, right wow. There. Okay, right there. yeah, it's... Good. It looks like it's stable. We're gonna do a bunch more testing on this, but it, it looks like the motherboard is fixed. Actually, I don't even know if it was broken to begin with because I didn't want to put a processor in it. So what does this tell you guys? Number one, don't be like me. Don't basically build your computer when you're super, super tired after working like almost 13 hours to try and do some benchmarking. The other thing you want to make sure of is that if you end up doing what I did, have the right tools on hand, have patience. Uh, and I think that pretty much wraps up everything. I'm, it, it, it worked. So I'm going to say, guys, uh, stay safe, stay healthy. Eber is going to be uh, wrapping up the day here. And uh, anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm really happy with my success and I was really sad with my failure. So have a good one, guys. We'll see you on the next one.